Okay, thank you so much, David, and thank you everyone for being here, and thank you for everyone who's been helping me put this event on tonight. And so I'm gonna, I think you might wanna just get up and stretch for a second before I get into this, because this is gonna be about 45 minutes of a lot of information. And uh, so, and then the, um, uh, I got this amazing uh, birthday cake that I cooked and some uh, a variety of uh, beverages, but you're gonna have to hold off because I'm gonna get started in just a minute or so. But I, like I said, if you wanna, um, uh, okay. My, uh, and in, before I start though, this is, I just wanna give you the, uh, the lowdown. Uh, you know, this has been this, the, this calling of mine to produce these, uh, these things, but it's all about the bottom line for this work that I do is to facilitate this evolution of consciousness and this shift that's taking place. And that's, you know, I'm gonna be talking mostly just about the, the portals and the geometries and all this stuff, but the most important thing to know is this underlying uh, reason why I build all of these, and that's to create these um, experiences that we can all uh, awaken to our own uh, divinity and sacredness, and then to see all of creation as sacred, and that we can inhabit this planet in a sacred, harmonious way. And that's really my ultimate goal, and I'm going to be working more in the future towards this, what I call the sacred re-inhabitation of Gaia, and the idea of eco-villages, eco-cities, and how we can actually uh, create the whole world to be like this ultimate utopia. Uh, but the first step that I was able to take is to start to build these portals, which I'm going to get into. So. Um, I suppose, uh, I know people are just finishing their stretching. I'm gonna, let's see, raise this up a little bit and we're gonna start with it. What you can see behind me is this um, diagram which is the base, uh, explaining the golden ratio. And that's the beginning of this whole story is the golden ratio, which is abbreviated with this uh, Greek letter phi. It's also known as phi. So, let me think. Before I get into that though, anything else I need to say about? <laughs> I've really been trying to, I've been doing this talk, I've been building the portal since 2004, and I've been doing this talk since about 2008, and I'm really trying to take it to the next level. And as you'll see, I've got all these uh, new uh, graphics, uh, 3D animations and all, and it's still in this process of refining and trying to shift it and focus it. Okay, so, I. So, uh, it, with, with this interest I have in eco-villages and alternative design, I was inspired by Buckminster Fuller, who's largely known for inventing the geodesic dome, but he really uh, is this comprehensive, uh, amazing thinker that is about, that we can actually uh, do with our abilities right now on this planet. If we applied them all towards livingry and not weaponry, we have the ability to provide for everyone on the planet in the most uh, amazing way. And that's what we're moving towards in this shift of consciousness. So Buck Bucky inspired me to get into design. I went to design school back uh, in the early 80s, Parsons School of Design, and one of the foundations of design is the golden ratio which is found throughout all in nature. Our finger is, uh, our bodies, our belly buttons divide our height at golden ratio. Each section of our fingers is golden ratio. And uh, throughout all of nature, and then also all the ancients, Egyptians, Greeks, the, through the Renaissance, all buildings, uh, they, they knew the golden ratio was this underlying divine proportion. So what is the golden ratio? Take any length, and you can divide it at a certain point where the shorter section is to the larger section as the larger section is to the whole. Next slide. If I have someone back there hitting next, thank you. So it's most commonly seen as this, the golden rectangle, which means that the shorter length of the rectangle is to the longer length in this golden proportion. And you can see this formula at the bottom that's showing this relationship uh, in mathematical division, and it also shows the number. It's 1.61803. And because there's a zero in that fourth decimal place, it's very closely approximated by just 1.618. And what that means is that 0.618 goes into 1, 1 1.618 times. And it's this irrational number that actually is this uh, ratio, with this 0.618 is to 1 as 1 is to 1.618. So if you take a square and, and, uh, and well, not a, take a rectangle that is golden ratio, the shorter is to the longer, and divide it into a square, it makes another smaller golden ratio, golden rectangle. And then you can continuously divide it into smaller squares and smaller golden rectangles infinitely in. And when you inscribe an arc into those squares, it creates what's known as the golden spiral. And this spiral is found throughout nature in uh, all uh, seashells, sunflowers, pine cones. So it's just this underlying principle of how nature and the universe uses to design things. And that as humans, we discovered this principle and we apply it to our designs. Uh, next, please. 
So another fascinating aspect of the golden ratio is this uh, Fibonacci sequence. It's named after the uh, a, a, a Renaissance mathematician named Fibonacci. It was actually, it, we found uh, that there are some other people that had discovered it before him, but being in Western culture, uh, this is when it was discovered, and we give it his name, Fibonacci. So just starting with zero and one, and adding those two numbers together, you get one, and then add one and one together is two, one plus two is three, and at this beginning, it doesn't look like it's very interesting, but as you go up higher than five, eight, 13, 21, and as you get up higher and higher, when you divide each successive number into the previous number, it becomes more and more closely exactly the golden ratio. The higher you go, the more exact it gets, and just by, you see, at 987 and 610, it's, it's exact out to f uh, five decimal places. So this kind of is another way to understand why this golden ratio is this underlying principle of how the universe uses to, to create everything, because it is just generated from starting with zero and one and adding successively together. So when I learned about this, we, you know, we were studying it, but I decided to uh, make this, um, this, this, this project that wasn't even an assignment, it just came, popped into my head. Next, please. And it was this weird paper model. And as you'll see in this next animation uh, coming up shortly, it's all based on the golden ratio. So I made this model back in 1984. Next, please. Um, and back then, these were the books I was reading. Actually, this is this two different versions, just to show you the, what the newer cover is like. But when I got it, it was called the Starseed Transmissions. It was just at Raphael, but actually later on, Ken Carey put his name on it. And then John Mitchell, New View Over Atlantis, which is an incredible book about uh, ancient units of measures. He, John Mitchell is largely responsible for popularizing the concept of ley lines and the Earth's uh, energy grid and energy body. And this other book, uh, Starseed Transmissions, is Pleiadian channeled information that talks about this whole awakening of consciousness that's taking place on the planet now. Next. So, I started going to Burning Man in 1999. That was the first year that the city plan actually became this, and it still is this shape. Before 99, it, they had various amorphous and uh, slow evolution towards this. So what you're looking at is this giant uh, city a couple of miles across that the streets just start at 2 o'clock and wrap around to 10 o'clock, and then from 10 o'clock over to 2 o'clock is this open playa. So when I decided, after going for a few years, to build this uh, little paper model shape thing, I decided I would put it out in the deep playa at 11.11. A lot of people see 11.11 as kind of this activation wake-up code. Next. And, um, oh, here it goes. So this is the genesis of this. Starting with a golden ratio, it tapers to the golden ratio, and centered on the golden ratio of its height is a golden ratio sphere. And then in plan, it's this diamond shape, and I made it so that it was exactly one-seventh. So the, the angle is 51.4 degrees, which just so happens to be the angle of the Great Pyramid in Giza. And uh, this I just had. Uh, so anyway, this is the shape that I decided to build for Burning Man. And uh, because plywood comes eight foot, I decided I could make it 16 feet tall, which made the center section about six feet and centered at uh, 10 feet high. Okay, next. And this was how I figured out how to build it. I don't, I don't have 3D modeling skills. I made a, four, a quarter scale model in my workshop. And if you notice behind it is this panel with that green color. Because I had seen this green color in a vision, and I decided to just make a panel of it. And when I was building this, I wasn't sure what color I was going to paint it. And then because I had these panels already done, I said, oh, I guess I'll just make it this green color. So next, please. Also, another thing was that i have been playing bass guitar in a new wave uh, rock band before I even went to design school back in the late 70s, early 80s. And I got my bass one night to feed back. And I said, what's the lowest note I can get to feed back through the bass, just goofing around by myself? And so I leaned the bass against the amp, tuned the strings down lower and lower and lower until it made this weird rumbling sound. And I decided to call this weird purring, rumbling uh, effect that it made that was constantly changing this kind of performance, the quasar wave transducer. And then uh, uh, this was in the 90s. I finally built a standalone unit, was just bass guitar strings mounted on an amplifier with speakers that could make this weird rumbling effect. And I, I showed it at a few different events and stuff. And it was interesting, but people would just look at it and be making this weird sound and be like, huh? But finally, for Burning Man, I was like, I know. I'll put it inside of the sculpture. Next, please. 
So I refined it into this unit here that doesn't look that fancy, but it uh, just sits on top of a bass amp. And the two strings are tuned. You can see how loosely they're tuned. And it just goes into this random chaotic feedback. And uh, I've been using this in every single portal installation uh, since uh, that first one in 2004, which I called the Diamond Portal, or 1111 Diamond Portal. And uh, I you know, call this the Quasar Wave Transducer. And it seems to change when different people come and go. It has a mind of its own. It's very finicky, too. Uh, next, please. OK, so here we are, a very low res scan of this picture. But the kit, the, the whole panels, the center section, and next. We set it up, and immediately people would either climb up into the central uh, cylinder or lean against the face to feel the vibrations of the quasar wave. Next. And as you could see, the, the opening makes this heart shape. And I painted the inside a complementary deep maroon to this green color. And it was only after I actually built it and painted it and saw these things that I realized that this whole piece is about the heart chakra. The green is the color of the heart chakra. The maroon also relates to the heart. And then that opening creates this heart-shaped opening. And then you'll see later on how it really does make this heart shape. But um, another aspect of the golden ratio is there's this thing called the Heart Math Institute. And it's found that when your heart rhythms are in golden ratios, when you enter into a state of coherence and bliss. So the golden ratio totally relates to your heart and the rhythms of the heart. So the fact that this is all golden ratio, green, and that opening, it makes this a very powerful heart chakra-based sculpture. Next. And there you can really see how the heart, and when you sit inside of that cylinder and look out, you can actually see the same kind of view of how that makes this uh, heart kind of shape opening, even though it's a perfect cylinder because of the tapered angle of the exterior. Next. And it was placed a mile away from the man, deep playa. So it, and back in 2004, there wasn't a whole lot of art out on the playa, so you could really see it from a distance. Next. And after Burning Man 2004, I brought it back. I've lived in Taos, New Mexico for many years. And I brought it back, and I actually put on an event on November 11th. It's hard to see, but the date of this local uh, weekly magazine is November 11th. And we held an event on 11.11 for the 11.11 Diamond Portal. Uh, next. And uh, this uh, Native American chief golden light eagle showed up right at sunset to conduct a ceremony for the 11.11 portal at, uh, on 1111. Next. So it stood outside in Taos, weathering over the winter. And it was uh, damaged in a windstorm and really uh, a mess. But I decided to bring it back to Burning Man for 2005. Next. Along with a golden ratio smaller steel pipe outline that was placed the golden ratio between the diamond portal and the man. So I started bringing golden ratio into it in uh, more ways than one. So this, th the base of this one is the size of the top of the original one. So it's, it's one golden ratio smaller, which made this 10 feet tall. And uh, besides that, I also started making these pewter pendants next. And this happens to be the 11th golden ratio smaller. So if you continuously made like the next size the, uh, where the top was the size of the bottom and did that 11 times, you would have the full 16 foot tall one. So it was really cool that the 11th rate golden ratio smaller is this about inch tall pendant. And I gave out hundreds of those at Burning Man. And since then, I do give them as gifts, or I give them as uh, gifts for donations, is how I like to say. So if you'd like to support the projects, I have these pendants available. Next. So uh, for 2005, you can see that this is a super telephoto lens showing how the man could be framed in there. Uh, and we uh, came up with a plan. My friends who helped me bring it to Burning Man said, we'll help you bring it there, but we're not going to help you bring it back. You have to burn it. And if I had to burn it in place, it would just make this big mess that I'd be responsible for cleaning up. Plus, it's made out of quarter-inch plywood and two-by-fours. So There's not a lot of wood in it. It'd be hard to get it to just burn up. But so I came up with this plan next, where I put it on wheels, and we dragged it behind my art car over to the temple. And then right, this is the temple burning on Sunday night. Took out the quasar wave next. And we rolled it into the middle of the fire. And that was the end of this original 1111 diamond portal. Next. And this shows the outline version, how those uh, circles actually make these hearts. And here, when it lines up perfectly, it makes these interlocking heart shapes. Next. And also that it's like perfectly sized for doing all kinds of acrobatic aerial yoga and, and climbing around. Next. And this is just a teaser. Oh, go, go to the next one. So if you want to see a seven-minute video of it, it's on my website. 
And it's great, it shows, it's, uh, anyway, so, okay, next. So, after it's burned, I'm talking to a friend about the portals who had seen it at Burning Man, and they're like, did you ever think of placing your portals on sacred sites? And I said, well, you know, I did study a bit about uh, the Earth's energy and sacred sites back in the 80s, so I decided to research it. And th now, this is uh, 2005, the Diamond Portals Burn. I go online and I find this book. And I had read this really amazing book back in the 80s that was a collection of uh, all different things about the Earth's energy body called Anti-Gravity and the World Grid. Amazing book. It's still available, highly recommended. One of the essays in it is by Richard Levitin. So this book was written in 2004. I bought it, it was a year old. It's called The Emerald Modem, A User's Guide to the Earth's Interactive Energy Body. Dial up the cosmos from your local sacred site. And of course the word modem was much more popular back in the early 2000s, the idea of a way to connect. But what you see right here on the cover is the very first thing he talked about was that the Earth's, the entirety of the Earth's vibrational energy body, it can be summed up as this green cube that surrounds inside of our heart chakra that is a way for each human to connect to the Earth's vibrational energy body. So I thought, that's perfect. I can use this for the next portal design. Next. So I came up with this idea for this green cube that's truncated, and I cut in openings, and I built this. Uh, in Taos, New Mexico, in a, in a warehouse. This is the first walk around as soon as it was finished. Um, and, and, housed, and you see there's this floor inside that you can sit on, and housed within that is the quasar wave transducer. When we duck inside here, you'll get to hear it, it's on. It's, it's, it's pretty subtle, it's not a very loud amplifier. You pretty much have to be right next to it, touching it, uh, to feel it or hear it. There were lights in each of the corners. The, the lower areas you could tuck down inside for shelter or sit up on top. Next. So there it is at Burning Man. About two or three people could sit in the upper openings and two or three in the lower ones. And at the same time that I built this, next, I also built a steel pipe outline made of square tubing. And there you can clearly see how that central structure, the openings in the central structure make this next shape, which is a cube octahedron, which we're going to be getting into uh, in just a moment. You can also see that the way that the bottom is cut off is makes an equilateral triangle. And that starts to infer how the tetrahedron is inside of the cube, or how the 60 degree geometric uh, grid connects to the 90 degree grid in this, by cutting the diagonals at a 45. So when you take a cube and do 45, we're going to get into this in just a moment, is this interrelationship between the 90 degree cube grid and the 60 degree grid of tetrahedrons and octahedrons. Uh, next, please. And you can see it's just, it's gone on to uh, lots of other festivals where kids love to climb on it. Next. And I also brought it to uh, San Francisco. They were both set up at an event there. So these have been traveling around a little bit. Next. So now we're going to get into the platonic solids, these five shapes. The tetrahedron is four triangles, octahedron is eight triangles, the cube is six squares, dodeca, do is two, deca, ten, means twelve pentagons, and twenty triangles of the icosahedron. And this next graphic is this shows how, starting with a tetrahedron, you cut off each of the corners of it. And as it, it becomes the octahedron. And then when you cut off the corners of the octahedron, at the halfway point, you'll see it'll stop and it'll show how it's both the uh, six squares of a cube here, and I'm going to be getting into that shape a lot more, and you know, that's halfway between a cube and an octahedron, but when you continue, it becomes the cube. So from an octahedron, you cut off the corners, you get a cube. Now, with a cube, you have to cut off the edges, not the corners. If you cut off the, the uh, corners again, it would go back to an octahedron. But when you cut off the edges of a cube, it becomes the dodecahedron. And then from the dodecahedron, you cut off the corners of that. And at the halfway point of that, it becomes both the uh, 12 pentagons and 20 triangles of icosahedron. We'll be talking about that more later. And as you continue to cut off all the faces, it becomes the icosahedron. So it just shows how these five shapes, which were, uh, we named them 
Platonic after Plato, the Greek philosopher that discovered them, these are the only five shapes that satisfy the rule of having all the same shape face and all the same number around each vertex. It's, there's only five. So these are like the basic cornerstone of three-dimensional space. And as you see, that's one way that they relate to each other, but there's other ways where they nest perfectly inside of each other, which we're going to be getting into in a, some of those relationships. Next. So this we just saw, but if you cut off the corners of either a cube or an octahedron, when they get exactly to the midpoint, it makes this shape known as a cube octahedron. It has the eight triangles of the octahedron and the six squares of a cube. But this shape is way more important than just that, as we'll see coming up. And Buckminster Fuller gave it another name, the vector equilibrium. Next. Because starting with a sphere of unit radius and then packing around it in a plane, you can pack six more spheres closely packed. Below it, you can put three more below and three more above. And when you connect the centers of all of these spheres together, it makes the cube octahedron. But not just the cube octahedron, but the center lines radiating out. So it actually makes eight tetrahedrons all pointing in towards the center that then make the outer form of the cube octahedron. But what's so important about this is that starting from the center and going out to each corner is one unit distance. And from each corner to the next wrapping around it in concentric rings of hexagons is one unit distance. And what this means is if these um, lines are considered to be vectors of energy, the amount of energy that's radiating out from the center is perfectly balanced by the amount of energy that's ringing it in. So this shape neither wants to explode out or collapse in. It's in perfect energetic equilibrium, therefore vector equilibrium. So this is one of the principles of how the universe operates and how energy can be in perfect equilibrium. But it gets, it, this wasn't the final answer. The, Bucky discovered this back in the 50s and 60s, and he has a book uh, out called Synergetics. He coined the word synergy, and his book, Synergetics, is a comprehensive study of all of his work. But it took a little more evolution, to, which we're going to get into through the work of physicist Nassim Harriman to complete what this uh, vector equilibrium is about. Next. So there's just a diagram showing that with the relationship of the spheres and the centers connected. Next. So now, starting with a cube, if you cross all of the faces of a cube in diagonals and then remove the cube, you get two tetrahedrons, one pointing up, one pointing down. But then there's a central octahedron with eight tetrahedrons all pointing out from the center of this. So this is kind of like the corollary to that vector equilibrium of eight tetrahedrons pointing in. This is eight tetrahedrons pointing out. This shape has also become popularly known as the Merkaba. A Merkaba is a Hebrew word that means light body vehicle. And there are uh, many people, Jumvalo Melchizedek is one, and other people that talk about, and the ancients knew that there's a meditation where you can envision this shape around your body to activate your higher light body and use it as a way to travel on the higher light frequency realms. And therefore, the Merkaba and light body vehicle is attributed to this shape. Next. So here you can see this relationship between the uh, star tetrahedron, eight tetrahedrons pointing out, vector equilibrium, the eight pointing in. So uh, after Burning Man 2006, next, I was invited to do this um, project in Brooklyn in this huge space. And so I decided to take that Merkaba and cut it next into uh, pieces to fill the entire space. So this um, diagram here, which hopefully I'll eventually get a beautiful 3D animation so it'll make sense, but it shows in plan above the uh, downward pointing tetrahedron is cut into what becomes a table and the upward pointing tetrahedron is these three corners uh, pointing up. And you'll see very clearly in this next picture what it looked like. So I covered the outer pointing tetrahedron corners in scrim, and then the center thing is where all the different performers, musicians, and uh, video projectionists would set up. Next. So here's during the event, you could see that the projections could go right through the scrim, and different artists and different people use the different spaces. And I call this the abridged Merkaba. The idea is if you complete the lines of all of this, it would make a giant Merkaba in this space. Next. OK, so here we have what Nassim Harriman discovered, is when you bring eight star tetrahedrons together, 
they form this larger 64 tetrahedron grid that he calls the structure of the vacuum. So clearly you can see in this, eight single star tetrahedrons all come together, touching radially at the center. Next, and I actually, and this is uh, sitting by the entrance, and we'll be able to pass this around later when the talk is over, made this steel version of it where I painted it out that starting at that very center in purple, it's surrounded by a blue vector equilibrium. And then you could see around the outside a yellow double size vector equilibrium. So what you didn't see in that animation is that the shape makes concentrically nested vector equilibriums. And then you could see very clearly in red and orange, the overall shape is a double size star tetrahedron. So what this shape is is a fractal star tetrahedron vector equilibrium. And this is what Nassim Harriman has discovered to be the structure of the vacuum or the underlying geometry of all creation. When they start to teach geometry and they say uh, you should start with a point, but a point is infinitely small, it has no size. Well, if it has no size, then it doesn't exist. There is no such thing as a point. A point is actually a, a misleading concept in talking about geometry. If you have a point, this is the relationship it has to have at the smallest scale, billions of times smaller than atoms, this is what the structure of space, the structure of the vacuum, is this relationship. And the idea is that you can half each of these struts, and you'd have the exact same shape reproduced in the center. Or you could double each of these struts, and you would have the same shape double the size. And you can do that infinitely in or infinitely out, which is why it's a fractal. And this may be the only three-dimensional fractal. Right now, it's the only one that we know of. No, no others have been discovered. And so it's really a, a, you know, a fundamental aspect. And the, the fact that each, if you see the little tetrahedrons on each corner, those are the individual tetrahedrons that there are six, a total of 64 in this whole shape. And it's interesting that the I Ching has 64 hexagrams. So it's like a one-to-one -one correlation with that. Another thing which I find interesting is a, there's a, a Tibetan uh, thing called the Heart Sutra that says form is emptiness, emptiness is form. This is my own discovery. And I think the form of the emptiness is synonymous with the structure of the vacuum. It's like to be able to really understand this. And there's one more really cool relationship of this. Next, when you do a two-dimensional projection of it, and then draw circles around each of them that go through the next intersection, it is a one-to-one -one correlation to the flower of life. So this shows how the flower of life, which is uh, like the most uh, famous of all two-dimensional sacred geometry and the culmination of what two-dimensional sacred geometry is about, actually correlates as is indicating this three-dimensional structure of the vacuum. So, there's a lot of information I'm going through, and I'm going to, after this, I'm going back into the portal. So if we, anyone has any questions about this, because this is really a key to understanding the you know, geometry and how it relates to space, I'm open to any questions, or we'll dive into the portals again. Keep going, yes? OK. Next, please. So back to this book. This book is really dense. It took me a year to read. It covers over 85 different features of the Earth's interactive energy body, and it relates them to all ancient mythologies over, throughout the entire world. It's really well done and, and just amazing. And he uh, explains that all the way he got all of his research was by doing a certain meditation, and so he teaches this meditation in the book so that you could verify the information he comes up with in it. So towards the end of the book, he talks about a feature called etheric blue dishes that are miles across and underneath all sacred sites to collect subtle cosmic energies and distribute it into the Earth and the atmosphere. And that gave me the idea to build an actual physical sky blue dish out at Burning Man. And I really didn't think I was going to do this. I just told it to a friend of mine. I said, hey, how cool would it be to have a big blue dish? And he's like, that's awesome. You've got to do it. So that really spurred me on to go do it. But then I thought, well, in the middle of this dish, it needs something. And I thought, oh, I could maybe put one of my older portals. but. He also talked about the evolution of the Earth's vibrational energy body having up to this time being composed of the platonic shapes. And at this time of this shift of consciousness, it was taking on this new form uh, next, which is this, this combination of the dodecahedron and the icosahedron, or the icosadodecahedron. And you'll see when you cut off each of the faces to the midpoint, it makes this shape that has both 20 triangles 
and 12 pentagons. And this was back in 2006, 2007, I'm designing this, years before 2012. But I had heard a lot about 2012 being the year that we're gonna be shifting, and I thought how cool a shape that is, this 20 triangle 12 uh, pentagon shape. So I decided to take this form and build that in the center for people to be able to experience this shape that is the evolution of the Earth's vibrational energy body. Next. So I decided that I would make that structure out of mirrors, and this is one of my first and only true 3D kind of graphic representations of what I was thinking. So in the very center, I thought to put a half of a dodecahedron that you could sit on and would house the quasar wave, have this mirror frame made of the, uh, just the triangles and mirrors, and then cover it with a shade structure that's half an icosahedron. Next. So I built this little model of it to propose it, and then next uh, we were able to actually realize it at Burning Man, and here is this space. It's a 10-foot high sheet of plywood. Uh, there are 48 sheets, which make it about a little over 60 feet in diameter. The sky blue carpet, the stainless steel mirrors on this icosa dodecahedron frame, and um, uh, aluminate shade cloth. Okay, next. And here's a nice wide angle, giving an idea of what the space is like next. And here we are looking for how the, you know, the sky blue and the small entrance next. And here's a quick, uh, uh, and also, yes, I made pewter pendants of it. And these are available with just the icosa dodecahedron in the center. Next, here's a quick walkthrough, what it was like to enter the space and uh, experience it. You could hear the quasar wave pretty subtly in the background rumbling. There were bass speakers throughout the entire wall and the one large speaker also in the center. Okay, next. And it was, I'll hit it one more time. This is, can we, oh, you got the volume? It was covered by Current TV, and this is a really beautiful four-minute video, which we'll let play, get a nice overview of the piece. And people tell me that they've heard rumors about the piece circulating and that they have to try to find it, and it is quite difficult to find. There's going to be a lot of people who have heard about it and who looked for it, but never figured out to come all the way out here to find it. It's a very peaceful space. It definitely creates an environment for meditation. Many people come into yoga here, and people are often quite quiet, and people start to talk. Sometimes you even hear people should shh them. Just 
each end of the string so they're super loose. Get them to feed back. And then just mess with them until they go into a state where it's constantly changing. Alright, that's really hard to find sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes it happens so well it's like totally mind blowing. We're at the sapphire portal at dawn after the man is burned. We're going to open up the section facing the sun. The portal is about to greet the sunrise. something about the color of the portal and the color of the sky at sunrise that seem to sort of work together with the vibrations. I don't know, I think it's very beautiful piece of work. I mean, love being here. By interacting with this project, you kind of have the possibility to connect to the Earth's evolution and understand our place and our relationship with the Earth much more in depth. And by doing that, you would hopefully then have a greater respect for the Earth and everything that comes from it. Okay, next. So what I learned from this piece, and here you see, I actually collaborated with these DJs that wanted to see the sunrise when they were playing their music. I, and we came up with this idea to open it up just for sunrise, next. And just let the, when the sun crests the horizon, we'd come in, and then as soon as it got up high, we would close it, next. Um, and I installed a rainbow-making machine in it. You press this button, and the rainbow would just shoot out whenever you wanted. And, uh, okay, next. Um, so, you know, what I learned is that, the, 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 that by inhabiting this space, it's a way to align your vibrational energy body to this evolution of the Earth's energy body. And I was also invited to display just the center portion of it back in Taos, New Mexico, where I built it as part of a, a, a public art, uh, uh, art and public space grant. Uh, next, and this, the center section has gone on to travel extensively to many, many other festivals. Here it is at Earth Dance. You can see off in the distance the uh, Emerald Portal outline over there on the left. Anyway, next. Uh, so I came back to Burning Man in 2008, and this time I collaborated with this guy I met uh, at Lightning in a Bottle named Jonah Kai that was doing these Galactivation sound healing ceremonies, and we hosted three of them in, in it. Next. Uh, so here uh, is Jonah with a group of people playing didgeridoos. Next, we have a quick little video clip of what it was like. And hundreds of people would come out, and the quasar wave was going, and the crystal bowls, the didgeridoos, uh, people singing to activate and have this uh, Galactivation sound healing ceremonies in the space uh, in 2008. And this is what we found on Monday morning when we went to take it down. There was this insane windstorm Sunday night, and it actually, if you could see, it lifted up sections of the wall and threw it 20 feet into the center. And it was really extensively damaged. I was planning to try to salvage it, but everyone working with me just said, donate the big pieces of wood and next, burn the rest. So that was the end of that whole giant wall structure, and I just the center section, as you saw, continued to tour. And that year, 2008, was the first year I started what I call the Portal Collective, where I invite other people to come and help me build these, design them, work on them. And one of the uh, first people that uh, joined the Portal Collective had come up with the idea for the next portal. I had finished that book, The Emerald Modem. I didn't have any more inspiration from that. And right off the bat, my friend Casey Greenling next said, the next portal is a stellated dodecahedron. And 
you can see starting with the dodecahedron and completing the faces out makes this shape next and you'll see it here in this animation that you start with the dodecahedron and by extending each of the faces out it makes these 12 five-pointed pentagrams but then the next thing is you connect the points of that together and it's an icosahedron so the stellated dodecahedron is another relationship between the dodecahedron and the icosahedron, different than what was used in the sapphire portal, uh, which was that icosa-dodecahedron combination. And then the sapphire portal was blue. Blue relates to the throat chakra. So for this one, we decided to go to an indigo third eye color. Next. And here I built an outline version. This actually debuted in uh, New York City at a festival called Figment. Before I actually started, you can see I built a little three-foot one, too. And this I call the Amethyst Portal Outline. And next, uh, it's, it's gone around to a bunch of different. This is just actually New Year's here in Apple Valley. Uh, I brought it. And you can see I took off one. Of, anyway, next one. So this is what I proposed for Burning Man, was to build a large one, indigo colored, and make the inside the green of the heart chakra to connect back to that. This is a cardboard model simulated to look like it's on the playa. Next, so uh, in Taos, New Mexico, in a warehouse there, I designed and built this in one month before Burning Man, next, and brought it to the playa. And after that, it went on, uh, well, let's see, there's a few shots here of Burning Man, next. Uh, people leaning on the outside, getting the vibrations, and of course inside, plenty of space. Okay, next. Uh, one more. And yeah, you see that this, even though it's not that big of a space, it really can fit quite a number of people on the inside. Next. And I also make pewter pendants of it. Next. <laughs> I gave out hundreds each year that I bring these. Uh, here's a nice sunset shot of it on the playa next. And you can see the lights. I'm all about minimal lighting. I want to have enough light so that you can see it and find it. But I hate harsh, bright lighting. And so on the outside, I put these indigo lights. And on the inside are actually these uh, the chartreuse green lights lighting up the inside ever so lightly. Next. And here it is at Symbiosis After Burning Man. And next, uh, LADCOM. Uh, next. Uh, the uh, whole Earth Festival in UC Davis, and then I was invited to have it shipped to, next, Portugal for the Boom Festival in 2010. And at the same time that that went over there to be part of the festival, I was also, next, invited to build the main stage DJ booth in the same shape, and that's where we just were testing it, but next, it was in the center of this huge, incredible main stage designed by the artist Andrew, Andrew Jones, or Android Jones, uh, next, I also made, um, <laughs> thanks, not too loud. I made the three surrounding Merkabas and I collaborated with an LED artist to put LEDs inside the translucent panels that were then uh, sequenced to flash in sync with the music. And then other video projection artists used those hexagon screens to complete the whole experience of this boom Psytrance main stage. All right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> That's Boom in Portugal in 2010. Okay, so that shape, as you saw, is made of all these five-pointed stars. So it got me thinking about applying the five-pointed star back to the original diamond portal, and I came up with this idea for what I call the heart star portal. But instead, if you can see, it's not an actual perfect pentagram. It's actually using the same seven-pointed geometry, 51.4 degree, uh, angle of each corner to make this five-pointed diamond portal or heart star portal. Next, this is a proposal of what a 16-foot tall version would look like if it were to ever to be built. This is just a Photoshop of a model. But what I have built are uh, actually two of these next uh, outline. Oh, no, first, this is pretty good. This was my promotion for it. We'll go, it's, it's a nice overview. It explains the quasar wave again and talks a bit more about this heart star portal that still is possibly it's will be built. It's important in building large structures to bring to the Burning Man Festival called Portals. It started with one that we call the Diamond Portal and had been involved to these other projects, the Emerald Portal, Sapphire Portal, and the Amethyst Portal. The next one planned is the Peridot Portal. Oh, it uses it was the called Peridot. It uses portions so. of the Diamond <laughs> Portal five sides instead of the original two, so the interior space can hold many more people. The intention and concept behind it is to be a portal to the next vibrational dimension that the Earth is shifting to at this time. There's a certain vibrational element 
to how reality was. And the portals that I built work with vibration to the sound sculpture inside of it called the quasar wave transducer that vibrates the whole sculpture <coughs> with low frequencies. And that's kind of a very important aspect of these portals. It's pretty much activated by the sound vibration. And having that physical sound vibration in it is really important in several factors. One is it vibrates your body. It's these low frequencies that are brainwave frequencies and uh, earth resonant frequencies. Also like a big cat purring. They say that the purring of a cat is a healing vibration. And the geometry that is, it's built out as a solid structure, but in reality, all of these geometries are actually vibrational patterns. Sitting in the portals, being exposed to these sound vibrations, uh, many people find it really conducive to very easily go into a meditative state. It facilitates a consciousness journey, and similar to the way psychedelics work on consciousness without the use of any substances. And it seems that the geometrical shapes and the, the colors you're immersed in are conducive to that also. So many people who have experienced the portals have had profound experiences. The portals relate to the evolution of consciousness through the chakra system. The diamond and emerald portals are green heart chakra based, sapphire portal blue throat chakra, and amethyst portal indigo third eye chakra. The peridot portal returns to the heart chakra as focusing on love and activating the heart chakra is a key to the evolutionary shift we are going through. It is a lot of work and I do, I do these basically for no money and I basically spend all my money on it because I feel it's the best use of my time and abilities here on this planet to help facilitate the shift of consciousness that's taking place. And I do this in the Benefit of all beings in all realms. Okay, next. I guess one more time, and yeah, so, so what I did do is build a 10-foot version uh, of the Heart Star Portal, which has traveled to lots of festivals, next. And you, know, you can see kids love climbing on it, next. And you can see how the, uh, the circles make these perfect heart shapes, and the star shape, the whole thing comes together, next. Uh, and I sold one of them to Jen Healy, who brings it around to a lot of other festivals where she puts these uh, yoga swings in it and uh, calls it the quantum playground and teaches us uh, aerial yoga with it. And it's really great when, uh, when, what, you, what you can do once you have those swings and move through the space inside of it. Next. Uh, and now I, I also put it on top of my uh, van at Burning Man as the uh, Heart Star Portal Mobile. And uh, here it is parked next to another very interesting sculpture, which you could see is based very similarly on the colors and shapes that I work with. It's another artist, Kathy D'Ambrio. This is, this was called, oh, I can't remember the, the Cathedral. And those are crystals all in those cat-shaped things. And you go into the center of it to align your chakras by standing in the center of those four cat-shaped portal uh, crystal grid alignment things. And uh, talk about that a little bit more at the very end. Uh, next. And we use it to go out and watch the man burn with our camp from Taos, New Mexico. OK, next. So. Um, you go over this pretty quick, but uh, this is an octahedron shaped portal. I call it the Octoportal or Whole on of Balance. It's based on a meditation that I learned through Tom Kenyon's website. He, Tom Kenyon is this amazing vocalist that also channels the Hathors. And on his website, he has all these meditations that the Hathors have been sharing through him. One called the Whole on of Balance, which is just to envision a octahedron around your body to help transit these chaotic times we're in. So I was invited to do this in uh, Brooklyn, uh, New York for this party next, a New Year's party in 2000, uh, for 2010, I think it was. And so I built this one for that event. And then after the event was over, next, luckily I found a home in a friend's backyard where you can see we're doing a crystal bowl ceremony. And I've gone on to build uh, four more of these. Next, uh, this is one I did in uh, England for a secret garden party on my way to Portugal for Boom. Next. And this is in Miami for the Moksha Art Fair that is held uh, during the Art Basel. Uh, next. And this one is another one I built for, to go to Burning Man uh, in 2011. Uh, next. OK, so that was 2011. I brought out the, the, the I just brought back the, um, 
the amethyst portal and that new octa portal. So now it's two, coming up 2012, and I'm thinking about uh, the next portal, and I learned about this shape that you see, it's uh, repeated twice on the far side there, a rhombic triacontahedron. This is in a video by uh, Drumvalo Melchizedek called Birth of a New Humanity. It's a really great video he produced in 2010. I watched it in January of 2011 where I started thinking about this shape, and he says that this rhombic triacontahedron is, w through his research, what the Earth's vibrational energy body is evolving to at this time, similar to that icosid dodecahedron that we had seen earlier that Richard Levitin did, had discovered. And there is actually a one-to-one -one relationship between those shapes, which unfortunately I don't have right here, but what you can see going on with this shape is if you cross the diagonal the short way, of all of the faces, it makes a dodecahedron, and if you cross the diagonal the long way, it makes an icosahedron. And what's very interesting is the ratio between the short diagonal to the long diagonal. Does anyone want to take a guess what that ratio between those two just might be? The golden ratio, exactly. So it's a golden ratio, dodecahedron, icosahedron. And that's supposedly, according to these researchers, what the Earth's energy body is evolving to. So next, I decided to build this shape, and here's a model of what it would look like uh, on the playa. And uh-oh, glitch in the, oh, just hit deny, please. My, um, and then it should go back. Hopefully it won't get, okay, next. So what, I was invited to go to Australia to Rainbow Serpent uh, to debut it in January of 2012. And this is the version I built in Australia at a place called Starseed Gardens in Byron Bay, next. And brought to Rainbow Serpent. Here's a little walk around. You get a feel of what it was like there. Built this in one week in Australia, almost, not like, almost a thousand miles away from the party. I had to drive two days to bring it to the party. Okay, we can go to the next one. I love that his hair is the same color. Uh, Andrew Jones did a video projection of his, uh, of his type of video projection work on it at the Starseed uh, Gardens for an event between this and then the following. It's, this is actually, you can find this on YouTube. It's not on my, I don't think it's on my website yet. It needs to be. And it's pretty amazing, the, the graphics and stuff he does. But in the interest of time, we're going to go to the next one. And I came back to uh, the US and built a new version with a slightly different configuration of the panels and debuted it at uh, the Symbiosis uh, Pyramid Solar Eclipse event. This is actually during the eclipse uh, this photograph is taken, next. And that then went on to Lightning in a Bottle, next. Uh, Sonic Bloom in Colorado, next. Uh, Beloved in Oregon, and you can see how it's a, really makes for a nice space inside, next. And finally to Burning Man of 2012. And I, you know, I failed to mention that starting with the diamond portal at 11.11, each successive portal went to 12.12 for the emerald, 1.11 for the sapphire, 2.22 for the amethyst, and then this one went, I placed this on the playa at 12.21. And it's interesting because that's also December 21st of 2012 was the date that we were supposed to shift into the next dimension or whatever. And so the, this was uh, the 1221 turquoise portal. And I also painted the floor, the uh, indigo of the third eye. And I chose turquoise for the exterior color because turquoise is the between the heart and the throat, it's the higher heart chakra. And in this evolution that we're going through, we're activating the higher heart. So be, be, by being bathed in turquoise color is to help facilitate this activation of the higher heart. Next. There's a nice shot showing all the people inside. I've actually counted up to 27 people inside, and it's only 15 feet across. Next. And of course, the pewter pendants that show how each of the faces are crossed to make that combination, icosahedron and dodecahedron. Next. So then, for December 21st, 2012, I was invited to go to Mexico to Chichen Itza for this event called Synthesis 2012. And on site, with the help of uh, Sachi Ohm on the, over there, we drove into the local town to the hardware store like two days before the event, bought all this copper pipe, had it cut to length, drill, flattened, drilled the holes, and bolted together this combination, icosahedron, dodecahedron. We call this the New Earth Grid Star. Next. And this is a photograph of it being used on the ceremony. This is about a mile or two from the pyramids on a private campground that the festival got for the event to take place. Uh, so that was, and it ended up, I think it's in Tulum at a yoga place called Uno. Next. 
Uh, then I went to, uh, in 2013, February 2013, to Envision Festival, where I built this half version out of bamboo, and these junctions I made called the New Earth Grid Dome. Next, here it is lit up at night. And then next, for lucidity, I built a, a, a more substantial version out of uh, two by fours, and next, it was used for this uh, sound healing uh, space at lucidity. So that's this geometry again, this um, of combination icosahedron, dodecahedron. Okay, next. So for 2013 at Burning Man, I did a retrospective of my 10 years of portals at the playa, from the turquoise portal, the uh, sapphire portal center, the diamond portal outline, and the amethyst portal outline. Next. And then I went on to symbiosis, where we had even, uh, including the heart star portal, all set up along the edge of the lake. And next, uh, this is out in uh, Utah. These friends of mine have the Jing Star Ranch, and they actually, uh, that's the home where the uh, turquoise portal now lives. They uh, generously bought it for me. And um, you know, once it gets uh, set up again from the windstorm that blew it down, it'll be uh, functioning out there in the middle of Utah. Okay, next. So that brings us up to this year. For Burning Man 2014, I proposed a project called the Portal Oasis that was based on the original sapphire portal wall. But instead of being an outward sloping sky blue wall, it's an inward sloping playa colored wall that provided shelter from wind and sun within it. It was intended to be a collaboration with other artists, and I was introduced to a group of artists from Texas that had a project called the Pachamama Portal that consisted of uh, hammocks, these lotus petal hammocks that they designed, like dream catcher hammocks. And that central dodecahedron uh, houses all of these musical instruments, uh, the didgeridoos and their steel drums and other drums to activate and send this music into it. But also in the base of that dodecahedron is this huge piece of organite, which uh, if Joa is still here, one of the artists who worked on that is here. And it was uh, connected into these uh, copper and zinc rods that were grounded into the earth and with all this organite. So it was a very powerful piece uh, interacting with sound and uh, other vibrational energies to be channeled into the earth. Uh, next, I think I have just one more, showing at nighttime, the earth really looked like the earth floating in space. When you sat in those hammocks and looked up at it in the sky, one of my friends said, wow, this is like the closest I'm going to come to what it feels like to be like in a spacecraft floating over the earth. And it was quite the effect. And you can see I put just some dim uh, LEDs around the edge to light up the space a little bit. And so the plan is that I'm going to use this wall, which you can see offers all this shelter inside of it from wind and sun. And I'm going to be collaborating next. Oh, here's the, um, I guess I didn't put anything more. Maybe, uh, anyway, here, of course, you see all the pendants I was telling you about, which I have available, and I, there's a new version where I put three of them together into the triple portal pendant. Suggested donation, $11 or $33 for the triple. Next, <laughs> I think we're just going to get into the fact that I make these smaller models. Here's a, 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 a model of the diamond portal outline. You can see real clearly the heart shapes in it. Next, the uh, emerald portal outline. Next, here was in a studio when I was building the sapphire portal. You see the model of the sapphire portal and some of the solid models of the diamond and emerald in the background next. And also, I've been commissioned to build, uh, this is for the artist Mars One in his backyard in San Francisco, another version of that uh, amethyst portal outline, but they actually chose to have it in the uh, more sapphire sky blue color. Next. And here's the um, one that went to Burning Man. It also lives out in Utah at the Boulder Mountain Guest Ranch where they hosted uh, events by Graham Hancock and Daniel Pinchbeck. That's actually Daniel lounging in the Octoportal at the Conscientia event there. And so, you know, these are available. Oh, I think there's one more. This is the last slide. I was commissioned just last year to build this one for a uh, residence in Silver Lake. Someone saw it, my work at Burning Man and they wanted a piece for their rooftop. So. Uh, as I was saying a little bit, I'm planning to do a new piece using that wall from the Pachamama portal, but collaborate with the artist uh, Kathy D'Ampria, who made that other uh, cathedral piece. And it's um, the working title, I think it's going to be Tourmaline Portal. Tourmaline is a stone about reconciliation. And the whole thing that I'm working on is that for this shift to take place that we're going through right now, of this evolution of consciousness, we have to get to a space where we uh, reconcile the and the light, the male and the female, all opposites, all duality, all polarity has to come to a reconciliation or resolution where we transcend it. It's this third thing of transcending it in reconciliation is how we will uh, activate this uh, 
evolution of consciousness, an evolution of our being uh, to go beyond and transcend the uh, duality that is ruling this world right now. And so that, that's the, and I'm, it's totally open to collaboration. Like I said, I have Kathy on board, but also uh, the, uh, through the Turquoise portal, I've met John Mitchell, who happens to join us tonight, and he, we're thinking of having hosting storytelling events at it. And we just want it to be as collaborative and interactive as possible. Uh, for the Diamond Portal, I didn't talk about it, but it's in the video. We, uh, in the second year, we hosted these sound toning events every year there. And by bringing groups of people together to just uh, uh, start to ohm and make any sounds possible, uh, Jonathan Goldman is an incredible teacher, has a book called Healing Sounds that I just read that talks about it. And he says when groups of people come together and tone together, it's actually a way to facilitate shifting the entire vibrational energy of the earth. And so that's what these portals are about, and that's what the idea is making these as containers for people to come together to interact and to activate this evolution of consciousness. Uh, so I guess I, 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 I'm sure we're all thirsty and hungry. It's, I've gone on for quite a bit, so I'm gonna, any questions or we can just uh, move right into the refreshments and birthday cake. But please, anything? <laughs> okay, yes? Yes. Well, as, as large scale, it's the installation art, yes, but the, actually, when I was studying design in the early 80s, an artist came and lectured to us about art furniture, and they made these very quirky, unusual pieces of furniture that actually were even collected by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. They, they were these young artists, and they were quite popular, this whole movement in the 80s of art furniture. So I started to make art furniture that was just sculptural pieces of furniture. They weren't like full-scale installations, and I called them vibrationally advanced. And they were all these very strange, very futuristic, very weird things using 60-degree geometry. Or I have this one piece called a, a Saturn table that looked like the planet Saturn. So that was kind of like I was building stuff that was furniture that was kind of like wanting to connect to what these portals are about. But the portals are really the first time I built big installations that you could actually go inside of. Yes, anything else? That's it. Well then, let's have some cake and drinks, and of course come up to me if you'd like to get any of those pendants, which I, I left downstairs, I'll have to go grab. But, and this cake is a recipe of a friend of mine from Ojai, it's, a, it's an applesauce cacao cake with chocolate chips and sunflower seeds in it. And we'll see uh, how, how it came out. This is my first attempt, this is the first time I've made a scratch, a from scratch cake since I can remember and uh, lots of different beverages. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm so honored to share this information and, and hopefully, you know, besides it being a lot of things to think about, hopefully, you know, I want to just activate you, just like, you know, I want this talk to be similar to the experience of being in the portal to help facilitate this evolution so we can all go out and uh, ripple out and share it with everyone else, okay? Thank you. <laughs> All right, take drinks, come on, and uh, meet everyone and interact. And <laughs> thank you so much. All right.